ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار فقد قال الله تعالى في كتاب مجيد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاه واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاه الله سبحانه وتعالى when he is talking to us he says واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاه be steadfast and be patient and also observe your prayers as well too many of the muslims if you look around the entire world shall we even say if you look around the entire world in, in the entire globe as a matter of fact a lot of muslims actually don't pray and they have the names of muhammad they have the names of ahmed they have the names of bilal mashallah wonderful names yes sahra aisha khadija absolutely wonderful names you see but at the same time it's not only about your name what floats what floats is your a'mal al awwal shay the first and foremost thing that a human being will be asked on the day of yawm al qiyamah on the day of yawm al qiyamah the first thing that you will be asked is how was your salah if your salah was good then everything else will be good and if your salah was bad then everything else will be bad a lot of the people when they are praying salah they pray salah in such a manner that they are praying salah for example like as if he in a, he's in a F16 NASCAR racing for example F16 NASCAR racing he prays so fast that you don't even think that this brother actually prayed you see in one occasion i was in the masjid and alhamdulillah i came there to pray and then upon praying i saw a brother literally right beside me and this brother you know I came there to pray and while I was praying this brother he came way after me and I was in my final tashahhud and I as I was about to finish literally the brother was done right I mean immediately before I was done way before I was done he completed salat what kind of salat is that what kind of salat is that you see someone that does not pray the way that they are supposed to pray then they have a problem you see there's a man that came in the masjid and he prayed two rak'ahs of salah and after praying two rak'ahs of salah he came to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said salamu alaykum the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said go back you did not pray go offer your prayers and then come back again so the man the second time he went he go, he went to go pray the two rak'ahs of salah upon finishing his two rak'ahs of salah he came back and the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said you didn't pray go back and offer your prayers he went back again for the second time and then completing his prayers he came back once more the third time and as he said salamu alaykum to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and upon greeting the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said go back you did not pray and the man was completely in a state of shock he was in a state of shock and he said what's wrong with my prayers i did pray and the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he taught him he showed him ruku' he showed him the way to pray properly one step after another a lot of us we pray salat many of us we pray salat mashallah but then our ahkam 
is wrong. The way we pray and the rules, we don't even know the rules. Many of us don't even know how to make istinja properly. And we come to the masjid and we want to offer our prayers. How does that make sense? Wallahi, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have seen a man, and this is not a young man, or this is not a newly convert gentleman, or a you know, person that just came to the deen of Islam, but I'm talking about someone who was Muslim for 20, 30 years of their life, coming to the masajid, you know, praying, I mean, standing up at the same time, praying, and right after they prayed, they went downstairs again for the next prayer. I met this brother in the in the washroom, in the toilet, you would say. And upon meeting them in the washroom, you know, this man was standing up and, and peeing. And after he had his urine, he comes back again and his pants is completely filled with urine. And then he goes back up. He looks to his right and then he looks to his left. He doesn't see anybody there. And he goes up, does not make wudu whatsoever, and then offers his prayer. How does this make sense? Isn't this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you apparently think that you can fool? The one who's, you know, sees the unseen, alimul ghaib, the one who you know, sees things that are unseen in life, that we cannot even see ourselves. Is this the person that you want to, you know, stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinking that nobody saw you, you looked right, left, and you went upstairs to offer your prayers? Like they say, as a messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for wherever you may be. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He subhanahu wa ta'ala can see you. How many of the Muslims today, if we look at it, how many of the Muslims actually pray Salat? How many of them actually pray Salat? I can guarantee you that there is hardly none or if there is some, it might be the Imam, the Mu'addin and maybe perhaps the janitor, the one who cleans the, the, the washroom or the masajid. That's all that comes to the masajid. Isn't he subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that deserves to be worshipped? As a matter of fact, if you think that Allah needs your prayers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from your prayers. He does not want your prayers, but you are the one who is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the one who is in need of prayers. مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ وَكُنَّا نَخُوذُ مَعَ الْخَائِذِينَ وَكُنَّا نُكَذِّبُ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ حَتَّى أَتَانَ الْيَقِينَ مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ And when they were asked, what makes you abide by in this fire? What makes you abide or what makes you, you know, stay here, dwell in this such a place? And they then respond by saying, and we were people that never used to offer our prayers. And we never used to feed the poor. And we even thought that the day of Yawm al Qiyamah, we used to belittle it, that it would never come. And today, this is what we face. This is what we are in front of. فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَطُعُّ الْيَتِيمِ وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَىٰ طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ And they were people that never used to offer their prayers. They never fed the orphan, never took care of the masakin, the poor. فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ And they were people that never used to offer their prayers. You see, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in an authentic hadith, that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, says, many other people today, they have this understanding that, okay, you know what, if I fast and I don't pray salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer my, 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 my fasting. He will accept my fasting. How does this make sense? If you're a person that is fasting and you do not pray salah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can guarantee you that you're fasting, you are only hurting yourself with hunger. You are only hurting yourself with hunger. You are only hurting yourself. You are not hurting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do not pray, and if you are fasting, know that your fasting will be nullified, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept it. رُبَّ الصَّائِمْ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعُ وَالْعَطَشِ That a person who fasts and they don't pray salah, إِلَّا الْجُوعُ They will only hurt themselves with hunger, وَالْعَطَشِ And they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept this person's fasting.
So know that Salat comes before fasting. If you are fasting and you don't pray Salat, then you are only causing yourself in jeopardy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all of this and He does not need your ibad if you continue to do so in such a manner. Again, by understanding this, the Salaf, they took, you know, Salah so importantly. Salaf of Salih, when they Salah, it was something that was important. When the ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to them, they would shake, they would shake, their hearts would tremble. Their hearts would tremble. Look at this. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so heavy. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون that لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن if this Quran was to be put on a mountain جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله it would tremble because of the fear of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The entire mountain would tremble. Now imagine a person who stands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying salah, reciting the Qur'an, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how heavy it is, my dear brothers and sisters. But yet we continue to do so by neglecting our salah, by neglecting our salah. How could you still call yourself a Muslim while you are neglecting Salah? مَنْ تَرَكَ الصَّلَاءَ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ Whoever abandons the Salah, فَقَدْ كَفَرْ They have fallen into complete disbelief. They have com completely, they have fallen into disbelief. If a person does not pray Salah, how could this person still be called a Muslim? How could they still be called a person that's worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are leaving the second pillar of Al-Islam after the testimony of faith? Second comes Salah. Observe your prayers. You must observe your prayers. At the same time, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in an authentic hadith, الأحد الذي بيننا وبينهم صلاة من ترك الصلاة فقد كفر that the in between us what's between us and them is صلاة and whoever abandons the صلاة من ترك الصلاة فقد كفر this person has disbelieved so for you to abandon your salah, then you are in a great, great, great jeopardy because this is a, the ultimate essence of being a Muslim, a person who follows the deen of Islam, a person who claims that they are Muslim, they should observe salah. A person cannot be a Muslim without observing the daily salah. Afdul afdal salah Afdal salah Salat al-subh fil jama'ah Fil jama'ah the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, أَفْضَلُ الصَّلَاةِ أَفْضَلُ الصَّلَاةِ The best of salah, salatul fajr fil jama'a, which is salatul fajr, praying with congregation. How many of us actually pray salatul fajr? Many of us, we don't pray salatul fajr. I mean, you would be so shocked to see how many Muslims come to the masajid for Salat al-Fajr. And then they come to Salat al-Maghrib trying to run the show completely. They want to say that, listen brother, the way you guys designed the carpet there is very bad. The way you, the masajid is built, the walls and everything, I want to put in my two cents. Who are you to put in your two cents when you cannot even wake up for Salat al-Fajr? When brothers are working Salat al-Fajr right after the Salah, who are you dear brother? If you have nothing to contribute to yourself and towards coming to the masajid and praying Salatul Fajr, then you should completely leave your comments to yourself. Because the people that pray Salatul Fajr, Afdalu Salah, the best of Salah is Salatul Fajr, Fil Jama'ah, a person who prays within the Jama'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Observe your prayers. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ For verily salah. كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا That it has been prescribed on the mu'minin, the mu'minun, the believers. When? Not whenever you feel like it. Not whenever two minutes left of those salat. Then you pray though two minutes left, then you pray Asr Salat when there's two minutes remaining of Asr before Maghrib approaches. No! Al-Mu'minina kitabun mawquta. 
that they have to pray upon the prescribed timing. When we're going to the doctor, we go to the doctor. At 9 o'clock, if the doctor says you have to be there, we're all there at 9 o'clock. Some of us even there, 8.30, 8.45. But when it comes to salah, we like to delay it, delay it, delay it. This is the amal of shaitan and something that we should refrain from as much as possible as Muslims. Rather, we are supposed to pray salah at its prescribed time. Look at this. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took salah so important. He took salah so important that without salah, you know, he put a lot of emphasis on salah. A lot of emphasis on salah by teaching the people the right way to pray. By teaching them how to pray. Pray the way you have seen me pray. And if we did not see him pray, then we have authentic collections. We have Bukhari, we have Riyadh Salihin, authentic books that tell us of the way that Sifatul Salat to Nabi. If you read it, that you know, by reading this book, you will know how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us in an authentic narration in Bukhari about the importance of Salah, about the Ifadail of Salah, one after the other. But will we actually step forward and take heed for this? Because salah is so important that it will make you stay away from all of the bad things. It will make your life easy. Everything will be back to normal. Guaranteed the mu'min, the abd, the abdul shakur, the, the person who is a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is thankful when he puts his head on the ground and he prostrates. Guarantee this person will feel tranquility and this is the closest time that a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closest to Allah is within his sujood or within her sujood. That's the closest time that you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine by putting your forehead on the ground and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of all that you need. Of all that you need by putting your forehead on the ground literally and making dua and crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will answer your duas because He is near, closer to you than your juggler vein. But what do you need to do that? Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, you have to observe your prayers. You have to observe your prayers. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu upon leading the salah in one occasion, a man came to him from the back while he was leading the Salah, Fijr Salah, he came to him from the back and hit him with a dagger. And Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, he fell on the ground at that very occasion. And the man not only hit Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, he hit numerous other peoples with the dagger. And they fell on the ground. And what did the Sahaba do? Did they just say, Oh my God, Umar bin Khattab, Amir al Mu'mineen, who's Amir al Mu'mineen for 12 years, he's on the ground, that's it. No more Salah, call the ambulance. No, they continued with their salah. Who led the salah? Abdurrahman ibn Auf. One of the people that was guaranteed that he would enter into paradise. He then stepped forward as soon as Umar bin Khattab fell on the ground and he led the prayers. Upon leading the prayers, he finished leading the prayers and when he finished leading the prayers, they took Umar bin Khattab, he shortened the prayers and took Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu and where did they take him? They took him to his house. Upon taking him to his house, what happened? They tried to get him to sit down. So they gave him milk, Umar bin Khattab, Amir al muminin who was in pain after pain, who was you know bleeding from his stomach. And they gave him milk, and when they gave him milk, when he drank it, you know, Amir al-Mu'mineen, and he started to gush out the milk from his intestine. And then from that moment, they knew that Umar bin Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen, was in severe, severe pain. And then who was there? Abdullah ibn Abbas, he was there. And he knew how to get Amir al muminin how to get him up. Because he used to be a part of the shura of Amir al muminin And to get him up, he did not say none other than Amir al muminin Salah, Salah Amir al muminin Abdullah ibn Abbas saying this, Amir al muminin then stood up. He stood up and he said, Wallahi, there is no faith with the person 
who does not observe prayers. When salah is called, who does not observe prayers, there is no faith. Imagine, someone who is in this pain, given milk, gush out through his intestine, and still says, salah, there is no salah, there is no salah, no faith, no iman, la iman, for a person who does not pray. This Amir al-Mu'mineen, if we look more so into it, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa upon you know, being conscious and upon being sick in an occasion, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he fell down and he blacked out. And upon falling down and blacking out, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he got back up. And when salah was given to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was not given to him like any order, any regular uh, commands. It was Isra wal Mi'raj. He went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get this command. And when he came with this command, Musa alayhi salam, who met him on the sixth heaven, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what has your Lord commanded you to do? And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam then said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded my nation to pray 50 times a day. Musa alayhi salam said, I have seen Bani Israel and your nation cannot do 50 times a day. Go back to your Lord and tell him to decrease the number of 50 because they cannot do it. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he went back up to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask him if he could decrease it and he granted him his request. Upon coming down, the Messenger, the, the Musa alayhi salam, he said, how much? How much has your Lord ordained you and your nation to pray? And he gave him a number and the messenger and, and he said, Musa alayhi salam, go back to your Lord and say that your, your nation cannot do it. He went back up again and he said, my nation cannot observe this much of prayers, but can you decrease it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreased it upon going down to the sixth heaven. Musa alayhi salam said, how much has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obliged you and your nation? To how much what you, were you commanded? Were you told to command your nation to pray? And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi salam said five. And Musa alayhi salam said, go back and tell your Lord to decrease. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam said, I cannot do it. For therefore I am shy of asking my Lord to decrease the number and it came down to five daily prayers. Came down to five daily prayers. And how much of us actually observe our five daily prayers and still call ourselves Muslim? How much? Many of us do that. Many of us do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. You see a lot of us even when we pray we look around even. No concentration, no devotion. You know that this person, the halawatul iman has not increased or has not entered into this person's heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again make us of those people who taste the sweetness of faith, the sweetness of iman. So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the second time, for that time when he blacked out, he said, as salah as salah wa ma malakat aymanukum. as salah as salah telling the people. And then what happened? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he fell unconscious. And then he got back up again from a few moments later. And when he got back up, he said, as salah as salah wa ma malakat aymanukum. as salah as salah this is a messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا For verily the messenger of Allah, his, his example was the best. Unconscious, blacking out, and still saying, As-salah, as-salah. Many of us in good health, salah, we don't really care about it. It's in our back pockets. Then he came back up again the third time. And he said, As-salah, as-salah, wa ma malakat aymanukum. Salah, 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 pray, observe your prayers. Then after that, he died at that moment. There was no more messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa so are you telling me that salah is not important when the last thing that came out of the, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa mouth was as-salah, as-salah, wa ma malakat aymanukum. 
Are you telling me that salah is not important? Yeah, Abdullah, when your parents tell you to pray, do you pray for them? Or you pray because you are a Muslim? And who is better than a person who does amal salih? Amila salihan and they say, Wakala inani minal muslimin. Alhamdulillahi ledi hadana. Lihada lihada wama kuna lena tedia lola and hadana Allah. Alhamdulillah, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to whom he guides whom he wills. He has guided you to a salah, to Islam. Observe your salah because you never know that if by not praying the salah, if this will be the last moment of your life and you will never know if you will catch another salah. So pray in the best of manners and do not forget your salah. Do not forget your salah because this is what will save you on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah and this will, is what will save you. When you enter in a dark hole, your salah will be there for you and your good a'mal. From listening to this, reflect. Be a person who ponder. You know, uh, someone who has an aql and say, do I just want to continue my life or do I just want to not only thinking that I'm deceiving people, I am not deceiving people, I am deceiving myself. Because on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the salah will turn against you, my dear brother and sister. It will turn against you completely. So pray now when you have the ability because you never know if you're going to reach your next prayer. I leave you with these great words of advice. This is Ahmed Sadiq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.